Hello, King's a &E. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pounds in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window and ultimately what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. I've been asked by three patients this morning how old I am and whether I'm qualified yet. She went, how long have you been a doctor? And I was like, I've been qualified for four years. She was like, OK, you can take my blood. And I was like, thanks. Morning. 27-year-old Matt is among King's A&E's newest recruits. Hello, sir. My name's Matt. I'm one of the doctors. Nice to meet you. Today, he's based in Resus and will assess each and every patient. So you've finished the 5K. Then you start race the 5K. Yeah. Race the 5K. Sorry, yeah. race the 5K. 17 minutes. 17 minutes. <laughs> There's this thing when you apply to medical school, saying, "Why do you want to be a doctor?" When everyone is told not to say, "I want to save lives. I want to help people," but why else would you go into medicine? Like my ears start swelling inside my ears, and then I start feeling dizzy. I okay. to lie down. This, this is what you get for uh, exercising on a Saturday morning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman here um, was assaulted last night. Yeah. yeah, kicked and punched into the head. It's really difficult to comment on my own bed bedside manner. It's not something that is really taught to you, and professionalism isn't really taught either. Uh, no blood seen triage complaint, C2 and C3 tenderness, decline damage easy. <laughs> if it's a young patient, my kind of age, I'll say, hello, my name's Matt, I'm one of the doctors. If it's someone of an old generation, I'd say, hello, my name's Dr. Mac. Or in between, I'll say Matthew. I think only my parents call me Matthew. Hello, sir. My name's Matthew, I'm one of the doctors. Nice to meet you. Tell me what happened last night. I was walking to get a taxi. Yeah. And the young mob of these youth just started punching into me. And yeah. Well, they ended up knocking me down. Mm hmm And then they were kicking into the face. OK. So he's only been in the country four days okay. and doesn't know the area, so... Welcome to London. I'm not very much like, me, doctor, you, patient, have this painkiller, trot off now. I try and create a dialogue. I just wanted to give him a hiding. I'm sorry about that. It's rubbish, isn't it? We don't think there's any need to scan your head. But we'll give you some painkillers to go home with, and if the headache gets really bad, then come back. People who do A&E as a career like a good story. They like the drama and they like the adrenaline. It was the left that they said, is that right? Yeah. OK, that looks absolutely fine that side. It's all right. It's all right. OK, no, everything's fine. I love recess. You have to juggle so many things and still 
manage to deal with whatever's going to come in next. All right, enjoy the rest of your day and you'll stay here. OK? Yeah. Bye, thank you. Try, try. Right. Hello, King Zaney. Yeah. Yeah. In ten. Thank you. Bye. Ten's red phone, ten minutes. Ten red phone, ten minutes. If the red phone rings, and it's not the usual person on the end of the phone from the ambulance central control, it's someone on a mobile, and then you know it's one of the helicopter service doctors, you know it's serious. And then you know that you need to get your trauma team together. Kirsty, are we going to five? Yeah. Okay. Do you want right. to be the B dog? I get a mini surge of adrenaline. You'll you'll never get rid of it, ever. I know that. Five, it's female, yeah? <laughs> Anyone for a polo before we begin? <laughs> this patient is a 16-year-old girl. She's been flown to King's from Kent. So, plain film, C-spine and chest, guessing, straight off. Yes. And uh, withhold the pelvis to recess, young girl? Or, yeah. Um, Dan is in resus one, trying, helping us put a line in. Your A man, so he will be down here. Trauma calls that involve young people are a whole different ball game. OK, we'll go on move. Ready, steady, move. You've never seen more people around a bed than a paediatric trauma pool. OK, ladies and gents, this is Ellie. Ellie is 16. She was riding her horse this morning when it was spooked. The horse then galloped into the yard and into a fence with her falling between the horse and the fence. She was crushed between these. On our arrival, she had a GCS of 15 and was complaining of reduced sensation and power in her left arm and left leg. Her left arm was in 130 degrees of abduction. She was markedly tender at C2 and C3 with this persisting left-sided sensory reduction. She's been stable in transit, no volume issues, and her immediate needs a further full assessment uh, and neurological assessment. Ellie. Hello, my name's Matt, I'm one of the doctors. Hello. I'm just going to put my fingers on your neck and have a listen to your chest. Any pain when I press? I can't feel it. Any... Can you... But you can't feel that? No. OK. Any pain? Ellie has been crushed by her horse during her regular riding training. OK, and just breathe in and out for me, Ellie. Balls, especially from, from a height, like a, a horse, you worry about injuries to the spinal cord. So, trachea is central, yep. air entry reduced by basally, reduced sensation on the left anterior chest wall. Keep your head still for me, I'm just going to remind you to keep it still. Which arm? Your left arm? Yes, my left arm. What about your left leg? Left leg, I can't feel it. Sorry. If they're complaining of not being able to feel anything below a certain level, that's when you think it's serious. Child has metal ball inside right ear. Oh More than a quarter of all King's A and E patients are under 18. They're seen in their own specialist paediatric department. <laughs> right. Okay, that's my little bit. <laughs> Enjoyed yourself. It's a funny place to walk into that waiting room sometimes, watching all these kids tearing around. You're thinking, which one of you are meant to be sick? <laughs> At 
adult patients come in and they're like watching the clock and I've been here for too long now. They have an expectation of what might be wrong with them and what they want done about it. Whereas I think a child just goes, oh, okay, I'm gonna go and get better, sure. <laughs> Today, Jackie is overseeing the whole of the emergency department. From paediatrics to resus. Uh, MCC Charlie Black is a 16-year-old girl who fell off a horse, crushed between her horse and a fence. So what's happening with her? Um, waiting on a formal report of the C-spine neurosurgeons coming to see her. Young people are only taken to the resus room if their injuries are serious. 16-year-old Ellie has been thrown from her horse. The trauma team are waiting for her condition to stabilise before she's given a full body scan. Do you guys want another chair or are you just going to stand? You're going to stand. Okay, good girl. Deep breaths. Okay, you So was it bumpy in the helicopter then? Is that what made you feel sick? I don't know. Is it very small in there? Mm-hmm. That's why I couldn't go then, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. We had a phone call. Ellie's had an accident and they've called an ambulance. Your back. Your back hurts. Mm. When I got there, the, the air ambulance was there, the paramedics, the first response and the ambulance were there, so there was a lots of people around her. There's not, not much I can do apart from reassure her, and I couldn't really even do that, because it's quite obvious that she wasn't all right. <laughs> I wasn't there, and I'm always there, and I'm always being told that I need to let go and let her do things for herself, because obviously she's old enough to do that and clever enough to do that, but I'm always there. This time, I wasn't. He was crazy, Mum. He's never stop. been like that before, is he? No. <laughs> Matt, yes. are you able to keep an eye on what's going on in yep. here? I just want to make sure that he remains cardiovascular so that you don't actually know the extent of your injuries until I've seen the CT. OK. It's been 30 minutes since Ellie arrived in Resus. The doctors have decided she's now stable enough to be taken for a full body scan. I don't think you can ever say straight away whether someone's going to be OK or not. Sometimes you don't have the answer until you've put them through the scanner. And that's, that's the honest truth. She's been crushed between the horse and fence. She's insensate down the left-hand side of her body. I'm going to run some water through your arm. Yeah, she was six, um, and off we went to the local riding stables, and, yeah, she started having lessons. Ellie's had such, such brilliant times competing and in the ring, or just going out for a hack on her own, just doing it her and her pony. It is a risk sport, it is a risk sport. They're not robots, they're animals, and so accidents happen. That's the chance you take. We do spend a lot of time together, and it's finding that balance between letting go and giving her independence and still being there. It is hard, really. You can't live their life for them, can you? COPD, right, let's sort this man out. Oh, he's got a temperature. He's going to need an arterial, but I'll do a venous anyway. Do you use your arterials? Not at the moment. I know how to do them. Yeah. Let me talk my through my um, arterial blast, okay. blood gas. 
Medicine definitely not in the family. School's not even in my family. I was the first person in my family to do A-levels. So yeah. I would feel for your radial pulse like this, and once I've got it strong, I've got it so strong underneath my fingers now. <laughs> I can feel it pulsing underneath uh, there. Stop talking dirty. I'm not, I'm just talking <laughs> of radial pulses okay, here. Okay, go on. My parents have got a takeaway in um, just outside of Liverpool, which is where I'm from. Straight in. Yeah. Bosh, Bob's right with Fanny's your aunt. Bish bash bosh. Bish bash bosh. Show you how I do it. Go on, show me. They know I work shifts, but I don't really think they know what I do. And I put my hand here. To hold that hand. To hold that hand because they will go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if I do that, then they can't. They, they can't, can't move flinch. it. But thanks for that. That tip is going to stay with me for the rest Brilliant. of my life. Destiny, Four-year-old Destiny has been eating fish curry. A bone is stuck in his throat. Hi, come here and take a seat. Do you want to jump up onto the bed? And is this your mum? Yeah. Mum, can you jump up onto the bed and your mum can take a seat here? Okay, did you see? Um, yeah. I'm just going to things to have a quick look in his mouth, if I could find it. <laughs> the nurse have told me a little bit about what's happened, but if you could just tell me what's happened to him. Okay, it was around 11, 12, you know. The fish bin was in my mouth every me, day, yeah. every so, night, every morning. So you're having a fish, you had some fish today, did you? And does it have yeah. bones in it, obviously? Yeah, it's got bones in it. Yeah. It's blood around it. Blood around it, <laughs> OK, all right. Well, you're very cute, aren't you? Yeah, all right. Um, does, does it hurt anywhere at the moment? No, it's going no. to swallow it. When you swallow, should we, do you want to lie down for me? If you put your head here, as if you're about to go to sleep. Open your mouth for me, as wide as you can. Ah. Oh, yeah, I can see yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Just give me a few uh, minutes, yeah. and I'll see what I can find. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, you. OK. Here we go. No, I'm sweet. Wow, I'm going to eat this. I'm coming down. No, wait. <laughs> when I get curry, then I put soup in it, then there was a bone, then I eat it, and then it was stuck in my throat. So painful. How big's the bone? How deep is it in? Um, I don't know how big it is, because I haven't x-rayed him, but yeah, there's about that much poking out, enough to grab it and pull it out. Hi, hello. This is one of my consultants, Dr. Hello. Butler. Hello, how are you? What's um, your name? Just going to have a quick look in his mouth. What is it? Destiny. Destiny. Well, my name's Jackie. I'm one of the doctors. I've just been hearing that you've been eating a lot of fish and you didn't chew it up properly. How old are you? Four. Four? Four, nearly five, or only just four? Nearly five when, when it's my birthday. When you have to be able to interact with children, so you've got to engage with them and because chances are you're going to do something to them that they don't like. You going to show me inside your throat? Ah. Uh... But I think you've still got to manage to look like a sensible doctor in front of the parents while you're being a fool with the child. It's a fine line. <laughs> are you ticklish, Des? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Not sore down here? Yeah. Do you want Shamim to try and fix you? Yeah? Yeah. OK. We'll just go and have a look and see if we've got something to spray it to make it a little bit more comfortable. The fish bone was this big. It was very, very sharp. Um, we're going to bring a little kid around just to try and pull a fish bone out of its tonsil. Hey. Where's the fish bone? Stuck in his nose? No, in his tonsil. In his tonsil? 
Ow, that's so going to hurt. It's fine. No, he just like... Yeah, I don't mind giving it a go if you want to. No, um, Shamim is giving it a go, and if he Shameem. can't do it, I'm done. <laughs> You should see this child. He's so cute. Aww. Just like, show me. There he is. It's the man. <laughs> Isn't he gorgeous? Oh. Big for four. Uh, you just got your mouth open already. Okay. Can you go up here? I'm up there. Wait, there we go. Hmm. Now, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to try and pull the fishbone out, aren't we? I like the kids, generally speaking, have no hidden agenda. It's like, I'm sick, and if you make me better, then I'll be really happy. Say, ah, uh, ah. Uh. OK, you ready? Oh. Nice and big, nice and big. W wider. Really wide. I'll say, ah, uh, really wide. Really wide like uh, you were before. Really wide, ah. Uh. Uh. Like you're singing. Yeah, That's good boy. it. Good boy, you OK? You're uh, OK? Singing. Good boy. Singing. You know, some people, Destiny, are frightened when they go to hospital. No, me, I'm so strong and brave. OK, well done. Doing really well. Ready, are. Uh -uh. Well, good boy. Good. Thank wow. you. Wow. Did you see how big that was? No, the swelling looks like it's coming down now, for real. Yeah, I can actually see your eyes when I picture of I couldn't see your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even listening to you. Right, I'm not going to laugh at you no more. I love you, doll. Don't touch me. I love you, no, doll. Don't touch me. <laughs> I feel like I should join in. I've only got the dance moves, guys. I can't sing, though, you know? He's the only one singing. We, we could be a really cheap um, new boy band. Yeah, we could we'll, we'll have to have yeah. Very that here. Talent. <laughs> Looks. <laughs> kind of a bit, a bit deafy on some things, aren't we? Best thing about working in Kings is the team. And you can have a laugh, even though you're dealing with a full range of human emotion. Hello, King Danny. Ten. Adult red phone, seven minutes. It's an adult red phone, seven minutes. And a striker trolley to recess cubicle nine. Thanks. Trolley to recess. A pregnant woman is being brought in by ambulance. She has severe blood loss. The medical team have less than seven minutes to prepare. <laughs> Jill is 36, a mother of three. She's in the early stages of another pregnancy. Oh, yes. Does it come and go like labour does? Yes. Seven weeks. You seven weeks? Yeah, seven weeks. Yeah. About three hours ago, sat on the toilet. She's been passing um, clots, heavy clots. Heavy clots. There's blood everywhere in there. Really painful down below, his head. <coughs> Eight previous miscarriages. Okay. We're giving us some Entenox, we're giving us some Metacol cream. She's much, much more comfortable there. Stop screaming and shouting. Okay. My name's Matthew, one of the doctors. Hi. Nice to meet you. How is your pain now? Um, it's about a seven. Okay. I don't feel to push no more. Oh, did you have the, the need to push? Yeah. Okay. It's All right. Kind of slow okay. Down. All right. For people who come into recess, they must be terrified. The commotion of everything that's going on around them, strangers that they've never seen before coming in, sticking needles in them, examining them in the most vulnerable state, naked but a gown. I, I, I can't imagine how terrified they must be, really. Leading a pregnancy, there's a high chance of miscarriage, but then, but 
you know, one in four or five pregnancies, people bleed, yeah. Depending on the gravity of the situation and the support that a patient has, I think as a, as a ground rule, you should be as honest as you can. Uh, how much do you think you've lost? Jesus Christ. Loads. Would you say cupfuls or bowlfuls? At least two cups. At least two cups? Yeah, easy. OK. I was bleeding for an hour before I called the ambulance. OK. And you've I... never had a miscarriage like this before? Not like this before, no. No, okay. no, no. Not like this. We had a very traditional kind of upbringing. As I grew up, I wanted to be a nun and I wanted to live a spiritual life. I... And then I realised I actually wanted to have children and I wanted to be a mum. Okay. So, one of the reasons why you might have in this pain and the fact that you're feeling this unwell might be because you might have a clot stuck in your cervix. Can you can move it down then or something? Cos That's what I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to, I need to lie you down and need to examine you and see what's going on. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. OK? When you've had more than one miscarriage, you, you feel that, you know, you get over the grief and the loss because you have this idea to look forward to and you have this... Um, it's almost like a compensation by saying, well, yes, you've lost that baby, but you'll try again and the next time you try, you're going to have that child. It's coming and going. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put your head down. Yeah. Sorry, dear. Sorry, sorry. That's all right. OK, I just need to examine you, OK? I can't see anything. There's just a bit of blood in there. I need to yeah. see what's going on at the cervix, OK? So, sorry about this. All right, that's OK. Well done. Any pain when I press here? There, yeah. Yeah, here? Ow. Ow! OK. Wow! OK, sorry. Shh. My God. Yeah, you should have used your left hook. Right, let me cover you up. <laughs> Oh! Could you see where it's coming from, if it's a cyst or something? Um, my hands aren't as magic as ultrasound, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, I think you do need another scan, and I'll speak to the gynaecologist, but we'll, let's just keep, keep the blood pressure on five-minute cycles. Right, let me get you some paracetamol, shall oh. we? Oh! Paracetamol, after they just gave me morphine, I need something stronger. Paracetamol in the veins oh. is, is as good as morphine. Oh. Ellie's been in recess for nearly two hours after being thrown from her horse. The scan hasn't revealed the cause of the weakness in her leg. Now, what I want you to do is just to squeeze my hand really hard for me. Come on, give it a really good go. A bit tricky. Okay. It just hurts. Is it because it's hurting or is it because... I'm trying as hard as I can. Try harder and harder. Oh, I can't go to pieces at all. If I had got worried, that would have been it for Ellie. So, therefore, you don't think about it too much, you just deal with what's in front of you. So we all had to be stiff up a lip and all that. Right, the neurosurgeon's just come in and they're going to do an MRI scan just to um, make sure that there is no damage to her spinal cord, basically. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> that horse can go now. Can it? Because of the nature of the fall, I'm thinking, any minute now, you're going to tell me something really horrible. Um, and it's the sort of scene you've seen on the television all the time. And you think, you don't know quite what they're going to say. I couldn't stop. I was standing up in my... It's not I was standing up in my skirt. Yanking him. One, no, not One hand on the neck. One hand up. And he was just... Didn't give a damn. Faster and faster okay, it, that was left brain. That was left brain, wasn't it? That's instinct, because he, he couldn't get around the corner. No. That's not normal, is it? I don't know what went on. Where are the rest of the notes? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. No. I just give up. Well, we'll sell him, Ellie. We'll just get rid of him. Oh, in the middle of my 
have a dinner. Oh, this one is bad, yeah. Are you okay, no? Fine. Really, uh, yeah. Yeah. You have five kids. I have three children. Three the rest kids. I lost them. I've never had a miscarriage this painful. So before. how many miscarriages did you have? Um, seven. Kids. This would be eight now. Seven miscarriages you have. So I've got three. And three babies. When I first became a mum, it was the best experience for me ever. Like, the grief that I'd gone through in the past before didn't matter anymore. Words can't really even describe what it's like to feel that sense of joy. I used to feel his warm breath, you know, on my face. I just felt that I had a sense of belonging with him, you know? Jill needs an ultrasound to determine whether or not she's still pregnant. I warned you that we might not be able to. Yeah, I know. Jill is seven weeks pregnant. In the past, she's had several miscarriages. I don't care about being pale as long as my baby's OK. In a few moments, she'll know whether or not she's lost her baby. I can't see any, any of the bleeding. I can't, I can't properly. Yeah, look. It's in here. Yeah. I, can't, I can't realistically be able to tell you whether or not there's a heartbeat. Yeah? yeah, but if it is a baby, then some, yeah, yeah, obviously it's the baby is still in there. Oh! Yeah, I can see you. Oh, Jesus, that's so good. What a strong baby. Oh, so much blood. Oh, my God, I can see. Yeah. This baby is a miracle. All right. You happy now? I'm so happy. There we go. <laughs> I can't believe it. Thank you. You are angels, man. You are angels. You are angels. Thank you so much. Paramedics are bringing in an elderly woman who they think is having a heart attack. Her children and grandchildren have come with her to Kings. Like you're a bit flattish for a second, is that right? Yeah. I'm just going to pop this onto your hand, OK, to take your blood pressure. Um, trouble with her breathing. It's all over the place. There's depression everywhere. Um, she's not complaining of chest pain at the minute. It's just the problem with her breathing. Hello, my name's Matthew, I'm one of the doctors. You've met Kirsty and Laura. They're our super nurses. Do you have any pain in your chest? Has it got worse at all since yesterday? No. Do you feel short of breath? I rarely let myself get involved in a family situation or in an emotional situation because you don't want to appear weak. 
in front of patients or in front of their relatives. What we need to do is just have a little chat and then what we're going to do is pop a line in and we'll find out what's going on, okay? We'll take some blood and check your blood pressure. Can we get a 12 lead as soon as we can? We'll try and make you feel better. My back's not good. I'm going to have to stand like this, I'm afraid. Your back's not good. No. <laughs> Really not good. I think I need to be on there actually. Get Do you off. Right here? Get off. Oh, okay. Take this stuff off me. Yeah. Mm. Should have asked oh. if I could have a scan. Mm. I could have nipped in there with you and we could have had a buy one, get one free, couldn't we scan? It's bits of <laughs> yard everywhere. <laughs> Ellie's waiting to be transferred to a specialist ward for further investigation. So far, all her test results have proved inconclusive. Emily, mm. if the neurologist person thingy can't find anything wrong, yeah. does that mean that I can go home, or does that mean that I need to need to find out what's wrong? Well, I'd say that we need to find out what's wrong. You have got some weakness on this left side, okay? Mm. You know when you've tried to lift your leg. You haven't been able to lift it very far, OK? And so the reason why we've done all those scans is to see in real depth why, why that is, obviously. And the other thing is, sweetheart, I know you want to go home, but how are you going to go home with your leg? Hey? Get them to carry me. Everywhere? Yeah. For the rest of your life? Yes. I'll come back tomorrow. I really don't like hospitals. <laughs> I know that sounds silly. No, it doesn't sound silly. I don't like hospitals either. Right, your blood pressure's back up a little bit. Let's get you that morphine. Initially, we were relieved that um, she hadn't broken any bones. The scans were coming back clear. There was nothing too major to worry about. Whatever had happened would repair itself. We didn't really appreciate what else could be wrong. Several things can make a bad day. When you can't quite get the answer of why someone is unwell, you know they're sick, you know they're unwell, but you can't quite put your finger on why. Even with all the barrage of x-rays and blood tests and camera tests and everything, sometimes you just don't have the answer, and that's really hard. How soon until she goes to CCU? She's not going to CCU at the moment. She's not stable enough, he said. He said he's afraid she'll go along the way. The elderly woman's condition is deteriorating. How braddy? She went to 38. Mm. OK. Can we get the paddles on her? Paddles? Yeah. She's got a pulse. Yes. Like Let's get another 12 lead. I'm going to get the family to come in here because she's going to go in a minute. OK. <laughs> 10. We need room 10. We... No. We've got a dying patient. The next patient to arrive in recess is a terminally ill man. Death is part of life, and death is expected. But when it's a death that happens on your watch, it's, you know, you take a step back and you think, what could I have done? OK, don't worry, don't worry, OK. I don't think, you know, that family is better than... No, they didn't have good news, did they? Too bit ill, awkward, like, be talking away. You can't all sit there like your last end did when it hasn't. Someone else's house. <laughs> so, nine's just died. Oh. 
and okay, is there family or anything? Yeah, so family are all there, family are all away. Okay. Oh. You can't be a doctor and not appreciate that people have to die. Even with all the best will, the best experience and skill, not everyone can be saved. And I also believe that, you know, sometimes not everyone should be saved. It's actually not in the person's best interest to stick them in intensive care on a ventilator and drag it out for another few weeks. Two of these conversations in a day is just... It's not your fault, Dr. I know, Mac. I know. I'm fine until the bit I write, may he rest in peace, and then that's just... I think if you don't feel like that when you exactly. when you certify, then you shouldn't be doing the job. Well, write your notes and then go and have a yes, break. Yes, I will, I will. It's always something very poignant when the last thing that you write in the patient's notes are, may he rest in peace. It's one last dignified sentence. Nice. You have a look. Are the family okay? Yeah. Most of the time when I'm at work, I try and separate what I, my family life and and my my work life. Let's give it another few minutes. I come from a very matriarchal family on on both sides. My grandmother has got to this stage where she's got chronic health problems. And I guess I kind of saw it in, in that family. The, the grandmother was, was the head of the family and, um, and seeing all her children, seeing her grandchildren all pile into recess. I think that was one of those moments when I thought, you know, well, that could be back home in Liverpool, that could be my family. Go and have a little breaky oh, no, break. I just need to. Uh... You need to go and have a break. I'll just order an x ray and then I'll go and check his around. I just need a five minutes of air. Go upstairs, sit down. Uh, I just need to uh, certify first, and then I'll go, honestly. The phone's here, the notes are here. I'll be fine, promise. <laughs> Frank, my name's Matthew, I'm one of the doctors. Nice yeah. to meet you. Do you have any allergies? No. OK, and what'd you take? That's well, good thing, isn't it? <laughs> At the moment, I feel good. You feel good? Yeah. That's the right answer. Yeah. The ambulance saved you. Yeah. Yeah, good old king. <laughs> it's, been, it's been one of those days. One of those days. Like tomorrow. Hopefully I won't see you tomorrow. That'll be a good day. Good day, Annie. You need a bit of stamina. You need a good sense of humour. Right. Go, go, go. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Sayonara. And you need to be able to forget everything when you leave because you know you've got to do the same thing again the next day.
The physio told me that my brain didn't connect to my left leg at all. And then he says it's going to take months for you to learn to walk. And you just think, I can't do this for months. I've never had a horse fly off of me like that. But I've been doing this since I was six. One time, one fall, you can't let that stop you. Sadly, the more miscarriages you have, um, when complications happen in the pregnancy, doctors tell you, oh, well, you don't really have a good track record, so it's more than likely to happen again. For me, my compensation now isn't that, oh, try again, Jill. It's I look around and think, you've got three beautiful sons, and I'm blessed to have them. I think traditionally men don't tolerate pain as well. I suffer from overexcitedness. James, let's give it a go. No. If there's a male equivalent of childbirth, you've just been through it. Thank you.